greatest. The greatest. I know what I'm talking about. That's it. It's over. You be I tough, right? What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Tough Glove Boxing. First of all, I want to say salute to everybody. I hope you had a wonderful day. It's hump day. You know what I'm saying? And boxing continues as always. We got some interesting things going on in the sport of boxing today. You saw the thumbnail, right? We're going to get to the main conversation. Ryan Garcia, is he trying to sabotage the event with the antics that he's been pulling? You understand? Let me get the camera right, right quick. Give me one second, guys. Get this right for you. I hope everybody had a good day. So you see the topic of discussions up above, right? I want to know what everybody's thinking. Okay, hold on a second. There's my other wire. So, my bad. Salute to everybody in the building. Salute to everybody in the building. So they had the face-off with Dimitri Bivol and Arthur Betterbeef. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask y'all a question. Who do y'all think is going to win that fight? This fight took five years to make. And actually, to be honest with you, I'm really looking forward to it. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to get my microphone right for you. My bad, here we go. Whew. All right, there we go. What's good, everybody? Salute to y'all. I can't even see y'all yet. If y'all in the building, okay, there's not that many people here yet. Good, good, good. My bad. So, like I was saying, topic of discussions up above. You see Dimitri Bivol versus Arthur Better Beef. So they had their little face off. Again, this fight is five years in the making. You know, what do y'all think about this fight? This is actually even more than this fight, it's just actually gonna be a great card altogether leading up to this fight. Like I, I swear, like the uh Turkey Alashik, he really did his thing with this promotion. I like that five uh, verse five commercial that they got. Y'all get in the comment section and let me know what y'all think. Salute the JC in the building. I see you. Thanks for showing up, showing the channel some love. You understand what I'm saying? Man, what you think, uh, Jay-Z, about that Dimitri Bivol off the Better Beef? Who you got? A lot of people seem to think that Better Beef is going to um, demolish Dimitri Bivol, but I don't see that happening. What I was surprised to see, though, is that um, Dimitri Bivol don't look that big next to Arthur Betterbeef. You like Better Beef for that fight? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, but think about it. Like, Better Beef has the power of the dog. He has that 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 um, drago mentality, like everybody likes to say, right? But Dimitri Bivol, he's young. You know what I'm saying? He's athletic. And I think that he can frustrate Better Beef. And, and and also, we can't forget, Bivol does have power. The only reason why we don't really get to experience his power is because when he's fighting, that's not his focus. His focus, his feet are never really set for him to really set down on his power. But when he fought Zerto, he was putting that power in them punches. And you saw how it was hurting Zerto, right? And Zerto was a bigger guy. Some might say Zerto was even weight drained. You can, you can say that. I mean, I, I can't use that as an excuse. Right. But I think Bivol is going to have a, a, a lot better chance than people to give him credit for. I actually have him favored to win against Arthur Better Beef. Yeah. Yeah. He got the 100 percent KO ratio and he's also 40 years old. Listen, if either way, I won't be surprised. But I think that Bivol is going to be able to outbox and outmaneuver Arthur Better Beef. And we've seen Arthur Better Beef hurt as well. The other thing you got to remember is we saw Bivol pretty much, um, he's active all 12 rounds, right? He can He's fleet-footed all 12 rounds. So it's not like he gets tired. It's almost like Devin Haney. He has the physical discipline to, you know, to go the whole 12 rounds and implement his game plan. 
Now, Arthur better be, don't get it twisted. He's very crafty. It's not all about just power with him. He's also a very crafty fighter. And the only reason why I want to bring this up right quick, because y'all know in the beginning, I like to just talk about some of the smaller topics, even though this is a massive fight. We're going to go over the card in a minute, because I really think that this is one of the best cards of the year, if we being totally honest. Yeah, let me share this with you guys. If we being totally honest, I think Dazzin might have one of the best cards of the year. Right? So, as y'all can see, right? Let's see who we got. Let's see who we got on a five versus five. Right? So, this is going to be on the undercard. We have uh, Zalezong versus Deontay Wilder. I'm actually looking forward to see, seeing that fight. Right? We have... Wait a minute. Am I looking at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have Daniel Du Bois versus Philip Hergovic, another good ass fight. That's going to be a great fight because a lot of people will avoid in Philip Hergovic. Okay. Now we also have Hamza Shiraz, right, versus Ammo Williams, right? Two undefeated fighters. That's going to be a great fight. Okay. And that's in the middleweight division. Then we got Willie Hutchinson and Craig Richards. Now, I don't know a lot about these two guys. I'm not even going to front like I do. I don't know a lot about them, you know, but um, I did see, you know, them on a face-off. You know, let me uh, put up the face-offs. Yeah, they, they all did the face. That's Daniel Du Bois and Philip Hergovitz, right? But hold on, let me put it back here for a second. And then the last one, another good fight, right? I mean, not last, but it's the first fight. Ray, Raymond Ford versus Nick Ball. That's a good-ass fight. That's a good-ass card. We can't front. That's a good-ass card. With the exception of Willie Hutchinson and Craig Richards, only because I just don't know really who, too much about them. Everybody else, that's a good-ass card. I'm looking for, I don't know too much about Hamza Shiraz, but I do am looking forward to seeing Emma Williams. I feel like he's been inactive for a minute. What you said, Jay-Z? Jason Williams, salute. Jason Williams in the building. I see you. Salute. What's good with you? He said, peace, tough glove, and peace to everyone in the chat. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Everybody hit the like button for me on the way in, you know. If, uh, shout out to the people that's already in the building. Salute to the people that's going to catch the video on the spin around. But I do think this is one of the, um, the best uh, cards that we have so far this year. Now, the other thing I want to show you, all right? is the schedule because we got some good boxing going on what do you guys think about Deontay Wilder versus Zalazon what do y'all think about that I think that's going to be a great fight so here we got the boxing schedule you know we got we're going to talk about it later but we got April 20th this weekend Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia which is the main discussion of this video I'm just waiting for some more people to come on in right? And that's going to be in uh, Brooklyn, of course. Then they got May 4th, Canelo Alvarez versus Jamie Mungaya. That's going to be a good fight for as long as it lasts, right? And then we're going to see Inoue back in the ring against Neri. I got Inoue winning that fight, but that's going to be in Tokyo, of course. Then we got Australia. Who y'all think? Do y'all think George Cambosos Jr. beats Vasily Lomachenko? I don't think so, but I want George Cambosos Jr. to win. Is that messed up? Anybody else agree with me? Yeah, bomb squad. And, and you know what? I'm supporting Deontay Wilder in this fight. But the fact is, he needs more weapon. Like, it's almost like you can't do the same thing if people know your number. I got to see him do, Um, I mean, I heard him talk a little bit on 78 Sports TV. I didn't really get to listen to a lot of it. And he's saying, you know, how he's, you know, hungry and refocused. And we're going to see, uh, you know, a new version of him. But can he really, at this stage in the game, be a new version of himself? I would love for him to knock out Zalazon. I would love to see that, but the fact is, Zalazon is a good boxer, and I don't. I mean, look what he did to Joe Joyce, who's a bigger guy, so his punches do do damage as well. You know, so I worry a little bit for Deontay Wilder in that fight, especially coming off the fight that he just had. You know, getting beat by Joseph Parker. But salute to Joseph Parker because he beat both of them. You know what I mean? Joseph Parker's in his bag. But anyway, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the Wilder fight. 
I don't need a new Wilder. I want the old Wilder facts. And, and to be honest with you, the old, the young Wilder, he used to utilize his jab and set up his punches more. And he had that ferocity, but he just fell in love with his power. Now everybody's just waiting for him to land a right hand. He used to throw the left jab. He used to throw more than just the right straight right hand. He looked chippy last night. Yeah, you know what? Jason Williams. That's what, you know what? Wilder said that. He said he's looking at this fight like this is like his last opportunity. But I'll be honest with you. If he does take another bad loss, right, it's going to be an uphill battle for him. But I don't know. Maybe they are still, you know, maybe they still want to see him versus Anthony Joshua. Right? Hold on one second, guys. My bad, my bad. My daughters, and they're cackling it up. So, yeah, anyway, I want George Cambosos Jr. to uh, beat Vasily Lomachenko. He plans to do movies. Who? Deontay Wilder? Okay. Okay. But look, so we got um, another great fight, May 18th. There's some good boxing going on. We got the fight on ESPN. Now, let me ask you a question right quick. The Canelo Alvarez versus Jamie Mungaya fight, I want to point out, right, that it says Pete, it says, um, Prime pay-per-view, okay, and Dazzin. So that means that the PBC does do business with Dazzin, right? So I just wanted to throw that out there. So really, there should be no excuse why certain fights can't be made, right? But anyway, let's jump off that. So yeah, May 18th, back down here, Alexander Usyk versus Tyson Fury. Another good fight that's been a long time in the making. If Tyson Fury pulls out this time, he's going to have a $10 million fine. Salute, Golden. I see you in the building. What's good with you? Thanks for stopping through. You know? Golden, who you got winning out of Arthur Better Beef and uh, Dimitri Bivol? Right? I got Alexander Usyk beating Tyson. I hope so for the sport of boxing. I hope so. Right? But if Tyson wins, that, oh, man, can you imagine if Tyson becomes undisputed? He's already nuts with the one belt he got. Then they got Josh Taylor versus Jack Catterall. I think Jack Catterall pulls it off again, in my opinion. I don't see what Josh Taylor is going to do too much different. Right? He is who he is. And then we got the main card that I want to see, right? Dimitri Bivol versus Arthur Better Beef, June 1st. And after that, June 29th, Juan Francisco Estrada and Jesse Ben Rodriguez. Another great fight. Another great fight. Now, as far as the undercards, right? I don't know about this Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia undercard. I see Arnu Barboza and Sean McComb. But other than that, I, I'm not really too excited, you know what I'm saying, to see what's going on. Also, listen, they got, um, I heard that Tiafimo Lopez was not fighting Claggett, but they still have it listed on ESPN. I like Tyson, Gordon. Tyson against, oh, Tyson against um, Jake Paul. Yeah, that fight is coming up too. Tyson versus Jake Paul. After all of them, Jason Williams said a lot of dudes are butt hurt that Wilder is working with Eddie Hearn. Bro, I don't care about promotional companies. Just give me good fights and consistently facts. Facts. I don't understand what it matters. I don't understand that part. I don't understand why does it matter, right? Let me remove this. Why does it matter what promotion, where this man is making his money at? Like when did, like, this is the thing that I don't understand, right? Like when you, it's, it's almost like his, his, a lot of his fans feel like he betrayed them. But I think that this is a good opportunity for him. He's been so inactive. This is the reason why he's looking like this in these fights. And I do think he needs another trainer. I think he was better with Breland, in my opinion. No no uh, slack to Malik Scott. Right? When when he was, when Deontay Wilder was training for the second 
no, the third Tyson Fury fight, and he was showing his training footage, and he was throwing punches to the body and moving out, moving his head and doing all of that in the ring. I was like, man, if he just do like 40% of that or 30% of that, he could set up a shot and get Tyson up out of there. And Tyson said, once I hit him, he going to turn to the same old Deontay Wilder. And in the first round, he came out throwing jabs to the body, looking good, and it was working. And then once he got hit in that second round, he went back to the old Wilder, just trying to rely on the right hand. And I feel like with the power that Deontay Wilder has, with that one punch knockout power, somebody should have taught him how to distribute a punch to the body. Could you imagine with all that power, what a punch to the liver would do to somebody from Deontay Wilder? A clean punch at, in the liver, if he knew how to set that up. But you never see that type of shot come from Deontay Wilder. It's like... He, they need, you know, where are the tools that were supposed to be added throughout his career to prepare him for these fights? Because Zelay Zong is really a complete heavyweight fighter with the exception of his gas tank, in my opinion. In my opinion. Shout out to everybody in the building. Hit the like, the, 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 um, like button on your way in. You know what I'm saying? Salute. Let me see who's that. Arnaldo Neves, salute to you. What's good? I see you in here. T.O. ain't fighting that dude. Okay, that's what I thought Punch Drunk um, reported. But they still had it listed on ESPN. But it's not on BoxRec, so, you know, it is what it is. Salute to you, too. But anyway, so I don't know. I wanna, I'm want to. i rocking with Deontay Wilder. I support his decision, right, to go ahead and do business with as many promotional companies as he can, right, and get some exposure and try to get back in there. But if he beats the Zong, that will put him back in the mix. But... It's going to be an uphill battle. Yeah, Zang gas is out. See, that's what I'm saying. If he can get Zang to like the seventh, eighth round, right? If he can do that, because Deontay Wilder can fight off his back foot when he wants to, right? He can get out the way and move when he wants to. A lot of people say he don't have no skills because they show his highlights and he's throwing windmills, but he used to actually, you know, at least attempt the box. Salute La Jessica. I see you in the building. What's going on? Thanks for coming through. You know what I mean? Get in the comment section also. Let me know who you think, it, who you got over Dimitri Bivol and Arthur Better Beef, who you got pulling that off, and Deontay Wilder, uh, Zalazon. Right? We, but yeah, but you got to remember too, right? Zane Gas is out, but his power is real. Like his power he does, is, does damage, and Deontay Wilder is really not one of the bigger heavyweights. You know? So, anyway. But, yeah, we got this event right here. This is going to be nice. I actually can't wait for this 5 for 5, with the exception of the one fight. What did y'all think about this little press conference and face-off? And what do y'all think about Deontay Wilder's new energy? He seems a little more reserved. So, you got better beef. She got better beef. You know, she got better beef. Everybody is picking better beef. I don't know, man. I think that uh, Dimitri Bivol may upset the apple cart. Who do you got out of Deontay Wilder and Zelazon? I'm rocking with Wilder. I'm rocking with the bronze bomber. You dig? He got, he got, he got some more left. He got some more left. I want to see, because you know, Eddie Hearn going to put you through that fire. He ain't going to babysit nothing. Koki in the building was popping, you know. But anyway, all right. So look, let me let me get into this this conversation right quick, right? Now that we got some of the family in here, I want to know what y'all think about Ryan Garcia, right? And all of his antics leading up to the fight. Now I know we know that we a lot of us feel like he's on some weird ish, right? We don't really understand where it's you know what it has to do with boxing but is his strategy working do you think it's gonna affect the fight i'm doing good koki salute to you how you doing man but he gotta show out yeah yeah i mean that's what i'm looking for i mean he need to stop just waiting on that one right hand 
Garcia is going to do something controversial at the weigh in, and I'm not sure if he shows up. Garcia is going to show up at the weight. Let me tell you something. I personally think it wouldn't benefit Ryan Garcia to go out in boxing by sabotaging his own event, something that could actually be bigger. Now, what we got to do is remember Ryan Garcia, right? He, he's doing a whole lot on social media, okay? And he's he's really drew a lot of eyes to him, but not always in a positive way. Initially, when he started coming out with the Bohemian Grove stuff and the kids and all of that, a lot of people were supporting him because there's a lot of conspiracy theorists who follow that type of content and things like that. And I remember he was on a lot of content channels that didn't have anything to do with boxing, but they were talking about that. So he did have everybody's attention. But then he made comments about Israel and situation that's going on over there. Right. And then he made people mad. You know, I didn't care. His opinion is his opinion. But a lot of people in his age range didn't agree with him. So he took people off there. Then now we don't know if he's a woman, he's a man. He said he identifies as a woman, right? We got to take the man for his word. My question is, if he identifies as a woman, why he have his titties out on the Empire State Building? Right? Where was his bra? And speaking of which, Right. Another reason why one might say it seems like he's trying to sabotage the fight. How come he didn't have a shirt on in that cold ass weather? Will he want to fight with ammonia? So I know he's doing a lot of mind games. I don't think any of these mind games is having the effect that he intends it to have. Garcia is unstable. Do you really think this is really him and his, his this the like what he's really going through? Because I mean, like if he's really having mental issues, because sometimes I look at him and I feel like he's crying wolf. I feel like almost like he's just putting up a front. And he's really prepared for this fight in a way. And a lot of people are talking about how he looks fat, right? Shout out to uh, World Combat Sports. He was talking about how Ryan Garcia looked kind of like heavy and he may not, you know, he don't look like he's going to make the weight, but that might just be water weight. That might just be water weight. But he better not go in that ring out of shape with Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me ask y'all this. Is he trying to sabotage the event? Do you think that he's going to help hurt the sales of this event. So you think he's just trying to get in the Devin head? I don't think it's working. I mean, Devin Haney did push Lomachenko for not too much reason, right? I remember Ryan Garcia, didn't he push Devin Haney? The thing about it is when they when they do that, I'm not really convinced because neither one of them, well, you know, I don't know Devin Haney like that, right? But Garcia's, that's not his like, character that we've seen like i feel like we're seeing something new right like what is ryan garcia right now like i've never seen him act like this to promote any fight he certainly wasn't like this during the tank fight you know did he really see something is things going on in the world uh like that yeah but i mean i feel like if he really saw something or if they you know, what he was saying was true. The FBI would be all over him right now. But Jessica said, get this clown up out of boxing. So she wait, she waiting for the Devin Haney beheading. April 30th. Jason Williams said, I don't try to understand it's nut jobs, whether they're playing or not. True, true. But he's really been like wilding out on the interviews and everything like that. But his punches look sharp. You know, I think that uh, we're going to see what his work with Derek James look like. At this point, they've been together for a while. They should have been able to build up a rapport and we're going to see what's up. Because I know Derek James is training Frank Martin for that tank fight. He ain't going to let that go. You know what I mean? So we're going to see how Ryan does. If Ryan was really focused, if he was all like bluffing because personally, you know, they do have history. The sparring matches that they had together were entertaining. You know, Devin Haney saying he coming to fight. We know Ryan Garcia is coming forward, you know, and this is the thing, too. The one thing I will give Ryan Garcia, he's quick and he has the power to change the fight with one punch.
He just simply does. Now, Devin Haney said he'll never land that punch, right? But Ryan Garcia, if he does land that punch, right? If he does land that punch, he has the power to finish and get you up out of there. And he does have a killer instinct once he has you hurt. And we can't forget that. And all of the antics that Ryan Garcia is showing us, right? And it was one of, it, Steve Lampley said something that was very, that made a lot of sense when they asked him about how he feels Ryan Garcia, you know what I'm saying? How he feels Ryan Garcia actions, uh, you know, have affected the fight. And he said, as an older man, and I can, and I can understand that I'm not a young, you know, buck myself, that him seeing it from his perspective, it looks like a lot of nonsense is going on. But maybe in Ryan Garcia's age bracket and how social media works, maybe he's just he just knows how to manipulate social media to his benefit. Because Ryan Garcia, you got to remember, he's been doing social media for a long time. And he really does live a lot of his life on social media. So. Do y'all think what he's doing is hurting the fight? La Jessica said he already have didn't the ticket prices drop. Well, I, I I mean, I didn't follow that, but I know he was calling for them to be lower, which if you ask me, I mean, I'm not that mad at if he's making it cheaper for the people, but at the same time, it got to affect the, the bottom line of the people trying to make a profit. Ryan winning would be massive headlines. It really, if Ryan wins this fight, if Ryan wins this fight, it will launch him into superstardom. I'm trying to tell you. This will, if Ryan Garcia wins this fight, he could possibly become bigger than Tank. And I know that sounds crazy. Number one, Tank would never fight that, like that would kill Devin Haney's chance of fighting Tank if he loses to Ryan Garcia. And mind you, while we are talking about this, in my mind, my boxing mind is telling me that Devin Haney is going to put the beats on Ryan Garcia. Even if we get a 100% healthy Ryan Garcia, 100% focused Ryan Garcia. Because I've seen Ryan Garcia fight a boxer, which was um, the one who put him down, Luke Camel. Right? So. Devin Haney can outbox him. Now, it was the lack of dog in Luke Campbell that he couldn't finish through and beat Ryan Garcia, even though I do like Luke Campbell, you know what I mean? But the fact is, Luke Campbell was a good boxer, and Devin Haney is a, is a higher-level boxer than that, if you ask me. You already have, didn't it? Okay, I read that one already. The cells are what they are. He's only taking credibility... From the outcome, if Devin wins, he won't get full credit. That's all. I mean, I don't know. They said that he said himself that they've taken drug testers and he he's come up clean, right? He's not showing us too much of what he's working with training. I know they show him working with his other hand, which is only natural for him to learn that going with Derek James because you're gonna learn how to use both hands if Derek James is training you. You know, I think Ryan still have respectable power, but I'm not sure what his strategy for this fight is. Yeah, he definitely I don't know what his game plan is going to be. It can't definitely can't be chop, chop, chop. That's 100 percent for sure. But Ryan has more than respectable power. Ryan can knock you out. That much we can't deny. And we got to remember Tank Davis may be fighting a more. I mean, uh, Devin Haney is fighting a healthier, stronger version of Ryan Garcia. Than Tank Davis for it. And not only that, if you know he is really unraveling mentally, he's fighting an unstable version as well. That could be a dangerous combination. You know? Arnaldo Neves says Ryan Garcia is playing everyone. I believe that. Of course, I can be wrong. He's not stupid. You're definitely not stupid. But I mean, he has lost endorsements behind some of the things that have come out of his mouth. Salute to everybody that hit that like button for your boy, you know. We just going to take our time and talk a little boxing right now. Salute to everybody that catch it on the spin around. I still ask you to hit that like button for me. 
Jay-Z says, in my opinion, this fight is a money grab. It don't... Nope, nope. This is actually a pretty good fight. If we get a, 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 a good 100% a uh, Ryan Garcia, this is a good fight. He said, I don't hold no weight. It don't hold no weight for me. I mean, but it does. I mean, it's for a belt. Jay-Z is for a belt. And these are two good fighters. Devin Haney being on an elite level. Ryan Garcia being one of the most popular. Golden says, if Devin KO Ryan, Tank will never fight Devin. I'll put money on that. That's a fact. We barely might get that fight now. But, you know, we, we'll see. Because Tank coming to 140. Ryan backs away in a straight line, chin up, hands. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, Dev just got to follow him when he backs out. Yep. Yeah, 100% correct. And that might be the strategy. Like, I don't feel like they, they said it themselves. They don't feel like Ryan Garcia has grown. They don't feel like he's developed any um you know significant new tricks since he's become pro i don't think devin haney feels threatened at all i think devin haney understands that ryan garcia would make him a pay-per-view i mean well we'll get more eyeballs on him i don't know i can't it's really hard to say who's going to be a pay-per-view star from who but i know one thing for sure ryan garcia wins he'll definitely be a pay-per-view star I would want, I would think and hope and want Devin Haney to be a pay-per-view star if he beats, um, you know, Ryan Garcia. But he, Devin Haney got so many haters. You know? Yeah, but we already know Devin's going to sleep on I don't know. I don't know about that. I would love to see that. That would, if Dev sleep Ryan Garcia, that's making a statement. That's making a statement. Salute to everybody in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Salute to everybody that's not in the chat just watching. Get in the comment section. You know what I mean? Make your feelings known. But yeah, actual facts. If Devin Haney sleeps Ryan Garcia, that would be a, a, a great step towards the Tank Davis fight. Because this is a good common opponent for them to have. So Devin Haney has to perform. Do y'all think that this is as personal as it looks? Do y'all think like the Haney's are just promoting a fight or they're really that upset? They coming in there for blood. They on some drag or if he dies, he dies. How many? And see, it just be so hard for me to believe it coming from them. Right. But at the same time, like when he was fighting uh, Oscar Duarte, Right, Oscar De uh, Watson was applying that heavy pressure in, in the midst of a combination, and Ryan let his hands go and clipped him, and you know he didn't even see the punch coming, and then he finished him. So Ryan is not gun shy. That much we know. If Dev sleeps Ryan, all the headlines will be how Ryan was unstable, how he was weight drained, etc. They can't say he was weight drained. They can say he was mentally unstable, but they can't say he was weight drained. Do I think T.O. is next for who? I don't think T.O. is going to fight Devin Haney. I don't think Tiafimo Lopez is going to fight Subaru Matias. Uh, I mean, he'll fight Tank if Tank comes up to 140. I just don't see it. I don't think uh, Undisputed at 140 is Tiafimo Lopez Jr.'s motivation. I could be wrong. You know, we're going to see. Dev won't get the credit he deserves. Watch. But but he was never going to get the credit. He was never going to get the credit. Excuse me, guys. I got a little cold, too. So if I sound stuffy, that's why. Arnaldo Nieves. Ryan won the head games against the Haney's, but the real business is in the ring. Okay, so you think that he won that? You think that he got into Bill Haney's head? Bill said T.O. was next. Well, if Bill, if T.O. is next, if that's what Bill said, I haven't heard it. But that's certainly going to be a lot of good content coming if that is the next fight. I would be very impressed with Tiafimo Lopez Jr. if he took that Devin Haney fight and we got that fight. Because that's arguably the biggest fight at 140, especially given the history that they have, especially given the common opponent that they have. That fight would sell in New York too. So if Devin performs here in New York well, then maybe he gets T.O. in New York. Yeah, I used to like T.O. too, you know? I used to like, I used to be real high on T.O. He started moving funny after he beat Lomachenko.
What did he do? And then, and then also, like, I'm like, why are you at the top of the Empire State Building, right? When it's freezing outside, right? Like, you could get sick before the fight and throw the whole event away. And, you know, is he still trying to hurt Golden Boy? Do y'all think it has anything to do with his, you know, displeasure with Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins, how they've been managing him? And if you ask me, I feel like they've he been standing in his own way because Oscar De La Hoya is not known to babysit you. Oscar De La Hoya is going to try to get you the best fights he can. But Ryan Garcia is a diva. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He bugging. I saw that. I was like, yo, it's nice outside. Everybody else is layered up, you know, got jackets on, you know? Yep. You don't cut your nose despite your face. So that's why, I mean, I felt like, I, I felt like I don't think that he's really trying to sabotage the event, right? He still held, holds on that he really saw what he saw. Like, again, like I said, I feel like if he really did see something like that, it would have been like the feds would have been on him right now. Like they would have questioned him by now. It would have been more than just the Internet thing. Right. I don't think that anything he's doing is now what. Let me ask you a question. Did y'all hear him asking where was Devin Haney's mother? And what was that about? He was asking Devin Haney, where's your mother? That's crazy. You know, and I don't know whatever history there that he might be talking about, but I just thought that was very disrespectful, right? I don't think I've ever heard the Haney's talk about his moms in a disrespectful way. Or did he? You know, no Bill, you know, Bill let his, his tongue go quick. No Diddy. Yeah, I thought it was warm. Yeah, it took Dev a second to process. Then he shoved him. Yeah, because he said it a few times. He said it a few times. I didn't know, I didn't understand what that meant. Like, you know, I was like, wow, he's really. And then the thing with Ryan Garcia is we know he's not this killer minded type of person. And according to him, from what he saw or what he witnessed or what he was told in his new mind state, now he just don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? He all with the smoke from what he's so traumatized. He just with the shit. He don't, he don't care about nothing. He all out going for war. It's battle. It's kill, kill. He growling. You know what I'm saying? He gets mushed in his face. He eats it. You know, ah, I ate the punch. Ah, you know what I mean? Then he comes out and says he's a woman. He identifies as LGBTQ. And I'll be honest with you. I know, I feel like he's joking with that. Like, I feel like he was being, he it was just satire. Like, he was just being sarcastic. Because, you know, sometimes we can just run with a narrative. We know damn well Ryan Garcia don't think that he's a woman. Shout out to World Combat Sports in the building. Salute King. Thanks for coming through. Appreciate you. Just talking about Mr. Garcia over here. Talking about if he's trying to sabotage his own event, right? I don't know. I don't feel like, I feel like he's just going to have to lure Devin Haney in. But I don't, I really don't see nothing he can do. He sounds loony. Yeah, he does. But the question is, is it working? Is it working? I don't know. Did it hurt the event? Tough glove boxing and chat. So, salute, salute, salute. Ryan Garcia is like, yo, he say he they tested him. He ain't test bad for any drugs or anything like that. You know, he does look sharp when he's throwing his punches. He's still not moving his head. He's still flat footed. Right. But what Ryan Garcia can also punch turning around, too. But we're going to see. I think that uh, I won't say it's an easy win for Devin Haney. He does have to be careful. But if Ryan Garcia can't land that left hand, does he have enough power to hurt Devin with the right? Is Ryan Garcia known for going to the body? Because he's going to have to go to the body to slow Devin's feet down. And from what I'm hearing, Devin don't plan on using his feet. 
It sounds like Devin don't plan on using his feet for this fight. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was watching the Lenares interview on Pro Box, and they asked him what his thoughts about the Devin Haney and, you know, um, Ryan Garcia fight. And he said, they was talking about when he fought Devin Haney. He said that when he fought Devin Haney at 135, he didn't feel any power. That's what he said. But he said the reason why he didn't feel any power is because he was weight drained because he said he got down to 135, but on the Saturday of the fight, he was more than 154. So he said that let him know that the amount of weight that he had to cut is the reason why he didn't really feel uh, Haney's punches. But as we can see at 140, his power transferred. We just don't know how, how far. Right? Because Devin Haney is not going to stand there and rock him, sock him with you for too long because he's not an inside fighter. His main, his main fight is mid to outside range. But I remember the Lenares fight. That was his first fight where he was stepping to his opponent because, remember, everybody kept saying they wanted to see him fight. And he was stepping to Lenares and putting the beats on Lenares. And then everybody wanted to see him go through some adversity. And as soon as he got clipped off the end of a five-punch combination, everybody used that against him. Even though he did survive the fight. Shout out the let's see who else we got in the building. We got Kazuma 624. Salute to you. He is trying to sell the fight. Come on. Okay, okay. Let me see. Jason Wayne, I think Dev will break Ryan down. This will be a complete fight for Dev. Ryan will start to look more and more like an amateur as the fight goes on. I don't know. I, I feel like they're familiar with each other. And if you look at the, the fights that they had, even though it was amateur style, they was really going at it. I thought the fight was entertaining. And Ryan Garcia was catching Devin, but Devin, I felt the one that I saw, I felt like, I don't know, it could have went either way, to be honest with you. Right? But they're familiar with each other. I don't think Ryan is scared of Devin Haney. And I think Derek James, I hope Derek James has learned to study film. I hope he has learned to study film because if you don't study film and you go in there to fight Devin the Dream Haney, you're going to get schooled. Like you got to, like Lomachenko, you can tell he studied Dev Devin Haney. And the reason why I know Lomachenko studied Devin Haney, right, is because of how he kept getting over to Devin Haney's weak side. That, it looked like he was practicing that the whole training camp. Y'all remember how he kept getting over to Devin's left side, getting around him and catching him with the angle? It looked like he was practicing that. So you could tell he studied Devin Haney. But, you know, like World Combat Sports pointed out earlier, Derek James doesn't watch film, according to his own words. So if you don't watch film, how are you going to defeat Devin Haney, a master boxer? So I hope he corrected that. But I think Ryan Garcia is going to have to go to the body. Uh, I, I mean, he feels like he can probably take Devin Haney's punch. I hope he don't make that mistake. But again, Ryan is a big guy. He's durable, right? His marketing strategy was not the best at all. His generation is where it's all new generation for us to see. Yeah. I mean, we say that because we all has now. But you know, you know what? Let me ask y'all a question right quick, right? Because we old heads. And a lot of times we always, I hear us old heads say, man, I'm not about that internet life. I'm not about that internet life. You know, that's that. I'm, 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 I'm an OG. I'm not about that. You gotta go home, but you gotta get that but I feel like head. this, right? I feel like this. If we had the internet back in the day, imagine we had the internet late 80s, early 90s, and the internet was popping like it is now. What? Come on, man. Stop playing. You know we would have been acting a stone cold fool. Right? We get on the youngsters for how they carry on on social media, forgetting how we used to really act off of social media. So imagine we had the power to, of social media back then. You know what I mean? But yeah, I feel you. I feel you. It looks weird to us, but to the younger generation, it's interesting. Because they need some type of something to catch their attention. Inside the ropes with Coach Mario. Salute. 
Salute to you, Coach Mario. Thanks for coming through. It says, hey, tough. Devin has never fought someone as aggressive as Matias. Ryan Garcia is going to quit again. This fight won't go past the ninth round. Okay. Well, you know what you, you, you in the ring and you train fighters. So you know about it more than me. You know what you're looking at more than I do, right? You think Ryan Garcia is going to quit? I hope not. If he quits, because listen, I did my best to root for Ryan Garcia. I really did. I really did my best to root for Ryan Garcia. But I just, he just, he's not consistent. You can't consistently feel one way about Ryan Garcia. Koki says, salute to Coach Mario. How you feeling, Coach Mario? I hope you're feeling well, you know? Jason William is Ryan. Uh, if Ryan is annihilated, what happens to Derek James? Well, if Ryan, uh, if Ryan Garcia gets annihilated, Derek James got another opportunity to shine in a Frank Martin fight. So, you know, it ain't completely over if Ryan loses, but at least I would like Ryan to put up a good showing of himself. That would even be entertaining. But a lot is on the stake for Devin Haney because he really have to put on because otherwise he's going to have to hear, you know, oh, you didn't do what Tank did to Ryan Garcia. So I believe with every bit of my heart that Devin Haney is going in there to knock out Ryan Garcia. But Ryan Garcia's antics, I don't know if it hurt the sales of the fight with everything he's been saying. Uh, I know he did initially have everybody behind him. The QAnon people loved them. So I know they were going to check it out, but people just might be curious. Right. I saw them, Bill Haney on TMZ earlier today. Right. Coach Mario, salute. I got to that one. SA salutos to you. Salute Garfield in the building. What's going on? Thanks for coming through. Thanks for coming through. Everybody shouting out the coach. The coach was cooking earlier, too. I see a lot of Kano local regular salute. This brother has got a great channel as well. I appreciate you. I appreciate that, Kazama 624. Thank you so much. Everybody hit the like button for your boys as, uh, as you come on in. You know? So y'all think, and you know what's funny? Surprisingly, a lot of people think Ryan Garcia is going to pull it off. I was looking at a poll on another channel. Who was it? Was it Pro Box? No, it was Dazzin. I was looking at a poll on Dazzin, who wins Ryan Garcia or Devin Haney, and 42% of the people thought Ryan Garcia was going to pull it off. So it's not like Ryan Garcia don't got people that believes that he can win this fight. He does have a large casual fan base, you know? It's different. Yeah, it came late for me. I know I'm jumping the gun, but I got Tank over Frank as well. This will be two years worth of L's for Derek James. Listen, I'm not counting Frank out, but... Yeah, I got Tank. You know, but Frank can pull off tank. Uh, Frank can pull off the he can pull off the victory though. Frank got power too, and to, and Tank Davis has never been in there with somebody like Frank. But the problem for Frank is Tank Davis got that power, power, right? I've never, I, you know, it's been a while since I saw um, Frank Martin sleep somebody. Javante Tank Davis got one of the highest knockout ratios in boxing. Yeah, Coach Mario channel is dope, for sure. That's why I'm always pushing it. Ryan is fooling everyone. Okay. I hope so. I hope so. He looks healthy to me. Salute to Dan Tan in the building. Thanks for coming through. You know, Jason, that's a good question. Tough glove salute. Let me see. Garfield said, why watch Coach, Coach Mario? Why watch Coach Mario channel? Or did he mean he watch it? I think he meant he watches it. Show some love. Hit the like for your boy tough. I appreciate that. He's a feeling much better, bro. Got three of my fighter fighting on the 27th. Garcia's AC level fighter. Easy work for Devin. Okay, salute to you on the 27th. Is it gonna be anywhere where I can check him out? It says Garcia is a C level fighter. Easy work for Devin Haney. That's what Devin Haney said. He called him a C level fighter. And I told you because he didn't develop. See, the one thing I like about Devin Haney is this. That that dude, and this is really one of the main reasons why I support him. I remember 
watching him right on a breakfast club when he was younger when he was trying to get the fights you know he was i think this was even before he had the wbc belt at 135 and he sat there and he told him exactly what he wanted to do he told him exactly what he was going to do and he did it and he did it and a lot of people like to talk about pay-per-view numbers when it comes to Devin Haney, but Devin Haney already said that he's in a position to where he don't have to worry about money when it comes to making a decision in boxing. That's what he said. And that's why, you know, I respect him because he's able to go for those legacy fights because his mind is not, it's not like, I mean, he's 25 years old and he got $2 million worth of cars. Right, he's not a hoarder, so it's not like he's trying to make a hundred billion dollars, and you know what I'm saying. He's grateful for what you know the most high has given him and the decisions he make because his back is not against the wall, right? And he's not all about greed, his legacy. He wants greatness, but it just so happens that they're moving real intelligent so that he'll be able to make that decision. It's in Key West. I'll have someone live stream the event. That'll be dope. That'd be dope. Definitely drop the link to where you're going to live stream it if you want. And I got another of a live on Friday coming up. If you want to push, you know, push the event and let people take a look at it. I'll be glad to check it out. Kazama, yes, is a fact. The Roly hype. But see, Roly was always, uh, we ain't going to talk about Roly. That dude is done. I don't know. I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think y'all giving Ryan enough credit. I think Ryan Garcia is a talented fighter. I mean, he's not, he's just not up there on, I don't think he's on Devin Haney's level, but Ryan Garcia has an extensive amateur background in boxing. He's not new to the sport. Like he really do box. He really do box. He beat Luke Campbell, who was, who was a gold medalist, if I'm not mistaken. Ryan Garcia really does this. He He's a fighter. If you don't want to call him a boxer, you got to call him a fighter. And it ain't like he runs around the ring. He comes to fight. Dan Tan, what's up, fam? World Combat Sports, what's up, fam? Right? Ryan Garcia comes to fight. But what's going on with all of the, the, the craziness is what I'm saying. What's going on with all of the craziness? And did it hurt the fight? Because I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. Outside of us on YouTube, right? At least when Tank was fighting Ryan Garcia, my son called me from school to ask me who I think would win that fight. He's not really into boxing, but his friends were debating it, and he knows I have a boxing channel, so he asked me. And what that told me was that people were talking about that fight, like that fight was live. I don't hear that same energy for this fight. Then again, my son is in college now and not in high school, right? So maybe, you know. Yeah, okay. I'm not disagreeing with you guys. A C fighter is still a good fighter, right? But, I, but I'm but i just saying, he did beat a gold medalist. And he does have an extensive amateur background. Goldie Locke, what's happening? Goldie, oh, Golden is in the boat, okay. You know? But anyway, guys, listen, I'm going to wrap it up. I just wanted to come and talk some boxing, 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 to see how you felt about Ryan Garcia and his answer because they still going on. I don't think he plans on stopping. Right? That push that he gave Ryan Garcia cost Devin Haney $400,000 when he did it to Lomachenko. Y'all remember? That's why I don't like Lomachenko like that. They tried to punish Devin Haney. Right? So I hope, shout out to George Cambosos Jr. I'll be with you, rooting for you in that fight, even though I do believe you're going to get your behind whooped. And if it's a close fight, you already know who they're going to give it to. If it's a close fight, you already know who they're going to give it to. Okay, let me scroll down. I'm sorry, I'm way up in the comments. I think the crazy is just to sell the fight. Devin is quiet. He don't sell fights. That's true. Bill Haney sells the fights, though. You know, but I mean, they tried to promote it good. I mean, they did their best to promote it good. And I think that, you know, a lot of people eyes on the fight, but I hope a lot of people buy it. You know, I hope, you know, it turns out to be just as big as the tank fight. I doubt it. 
but don't count Ryan Garcia out. Don't count Ryan Garcia out because of, um, you know, Devin Haney, I mean, he didn't get touched at all by Regis Prograde, right? But you really got to admit that Regis and, and, and um, Ryan Garcia, they two different styles of fighter. And if you ask me, I think Ryan Garcia got more got a, got more of an arsenal than Regis Prograde had. Regis Prograde was mainly like a dog. He was like a fighter, right? I think Ryan Garcia can be a combination of both. And I don't think that his chin is as weak as it used to be, right? With the tank fight, y'all know how I feel about that already. I felt he was drained. He looked drained to me. He looked weak, like he didn't have no energy. But his dumb behind decided to sign, you know, sign the contract. Went against his promoters and everything like that. I feel like he could have just went on and, and made his bones at 140. Tank is coming to 140 anyway. Right? But he wanted to get that bag. He got it. Okay, so now we're going to see what this look like. Because Oscar Duarte fight, he didn't look that impressive in that fight for most of that fight. I, I'm going to tell you, though, Devin Haney is not underestimating him because he's been in the ring with him six times. So he's not underestimating him. That's 100% for sure. You know? But anyway, I appreciate everybody that came through. Our power hour is coming to an end. Dimitri Bivol versus Arthur Betterbeev. I got Bivol, right? I got Bivol by decision. Uh, most people got off the better beef and I don't, you know, I won't be surprised if he does pull it off because he's a dog. Uh, Deontay Wilder versus Lei Zong. I'm rock. My heart is with Deontay Wilder. My boxing mind is going with Zong or Zelay Zong or, or Zay. John is, is, do you pronounce that John? Zelay John? Is Ryan Garcia sabotage in this event? I don't think so. I don't think he is. I just think he's doing social media ish. And since a lot of us don't really understand it or how it works, then, you know, it goes over our head, right? But we're going to see. We're going to see if this fight can deliver um, on Saturday. Because if it does, it sets up a lot of things in the future for us. And we already got a good year of boxing. Thank you, LaJessica, for that. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Salute to everybody that's going to catch it on the spin around. Salute to everybody in the building. La Jessica. Tough Glove Queen, thank you for coming through. Garfield in the building. Kazama624, Dan Tan, Jay-Z, Golden, the OG. You understand what I'm saying? World Combat Sports, stop by, show some love to the, you know, the kid. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Jason Williams, Nieves. I see all of you guys, right? The next live is going to be Friday. I might do it a little earlier, depending on what goes on in boxing. And I'm definitely going to cover the uh, fight between... Um, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, if y'all want to rock with me during that fight, you are welcome to do so. And with that said, guys, salute to you. Thank you again for coming through. Tough Glove Boxing, we are out. I know what I'm talking about. You think you're That's it. It's over. You be I.